Our breaking news this evening is the identity of the man who sent the Obama administration into defend and explain mode this week. His name is Edward Snowden. He's an American former CIA employee and computer technician. Today he came out as the leaker of classified NSA documents that spell out a secret surveillance program. It's the biggest leak of government secrets in history. And it all started with a short message to journalist Glenn Greenwald in December 2012. Just a few months later, thousands of classified documents from the National Security Agency began appearing on the internet, thanks to whistleblower Edward Snowden. The documents range from the mundane, like departmental memos discussing office politics, to the groundbreaking, such as the secret court order allowing the NSA to access customers' phone records from telecommunication companies like Verizon. Snowden found himself both revered and hated following the revelations debates began to swirl regarding his status as either a traitor or a patriot. I'm just an average man. The fact is, to some extent, we all knew it was happening. Since 9-11 and the passing of the Patriot Act, our rights to privacy and internet freedom have been seriously hacked away under the guise of security. The Snowden revelations were unprecedented because they exposed and proved the extent to which those freedoms had been compromised by a government agency. Dr. Jonathan Penny, assistant professor at Dalhousie University and a research fellow at the Citizen Lab, believes that this particular revelation had a chilling effect on American citizens. Government surveillance can negatively impact the legal activities of everyday people, including their access to information and knowledge online. The chilling effect as a legal doctrine gained popularity during the height of the Cold War in the 50s and 60s. In recognizing a communist, physical appearance counts for nothing. If he openly declares himself to be a communist, we take his word for it. Under this doctrine, courts were encouraged to treat rules or government actions that might deter the free exercise of the First Amendment rights with suspicion. This doctrine was penned by assumptions made in previous academic research regarding the effects government acts can have on an individual's behavior. Essentially, the belief was that certain state acts may chill or deter people from exercising their freedoms or engaging in legal activities. Penny utilizes this theory to test his own hypothesis that following the Snowden revelations, traffic to privacy-sensitive Wikipedia articles declined. Using statistical analysis and surveys, Penny found that following the revelations in 2013, there was an immediate decline in traffic for these Wikipedia articles of about 30%. His research showed that over time, as information about government surveillance spreads, even more users might choose not to view the terrorism-related Wikipedia articles. For Penny, this evidence is extremely significant because it proves how legal access to and the sharing of information can be inhibited due to the perception of government surveillance and the subsequent fear that comes from it. Daniel Salav, associate professor at George Washington University Law School, argues direct awareness of surveillance can make a person feel extremely uncomfortable, but it can also cause that person to alter their behavior. Surveillance can lead to self-censorship and inhibition. If we're worried about the consequences of informing ourselves about security-related or sensitive topics like terrorism, then how can we maintain a healthy democratic society? We now live in a post-Snowden world where we are no longer blind to the antics of our government. This means utilizing your power as a citizen to demand change and take action in order to prevent the self-censoring society. By informing yourself about sensitive topics and controversial debates, you are in fact resisting the chilling effect and directly opposing Big Brother.